Earlier this week, I talked about Fall of X and basically how Marvel Comics are just absolutely desperate. They do not know how to fix their X-Men line. And now that we have some more details regarding Fall of X, it's somehow gotten worse. I don't know what the hell they're thinking, but Fall of X is done. The Krakoan era is, is just buried. There's nothing that they can do to actually fix any of this. They're just going to have to go to another reboot within the next 24 months or so. And you're talking to me about that is the X-Men story and the Marvel aficionado himself. Doc, move. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm significantly better than the X franchise because, well, I have a future and they don't. It's pretty crazy. So we got the Fall of X lineup information and it doesn't seem like an event. It feels like it's Summer of Symbiotes as well, where I guess there's a common theme perhaps to the books, but it's just basically to put trade dress on comic books and hope that that bumps up sales. Yeah, it's um, an excuse to launch like 14 new titles because the 12 titles that failed in the last round weren't enough with a new masthead, new logos, some trade dress and a banner across the top that'll say Fall of X instead of Reign of X or whatever the fuck else of X was here before. It's not an event. It's a trade no. dress. Yeah, exactly. It is nowhere close to an event. It is just a trade dress. But they are launching a few new titles and we do have the details for these and this is not for the fate of heart. If you're an X-Men fan and you had hopes of something turning around, you should turn the video off right now because it's going to get worse and worse and worse. First up, we have Astonishing Iceman launching on August 2nd, written by Steve Orlando. Astonishing Iceman will feature Iceman as Earth's new protector after the events of this year's Can't Miss Hellfire Gala. And you're going to hear that a lot because Marvel could not stop saying it. Bobby Drake, a.k.a. Iceman, sets his sights on heroic deeds like never before. But as a new situation develops that links Iceman to his Antarctic Ice Palace, he'll have to be slicker than ever to accomplish his mission before Orcus knows what hit him. See the Omega-level mutant as you've never seen him before in a saga that'll push Iceman to the limits of his powers and beyond. Steve Orlando on a queer character. Color me surprised, Doc. You're not going to get much else more than what we did before. And what the fuck is his Antarctic Ice Palace? Since He's when has this shit now. existed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's fucking Superman. This is a thing that doesn't exist. Look, I, Iceman's an interesting character. I like Iceman. I, I've really enjoyed some of his solo stuff throughout the years, but he's a team character. He is not a solo character. And the, the idea that this book is ongoing is laughable on its face. So No, no, there's no way this makes it past six issues. Yeah, no. ever since Steve Orlando's come over to Marvel, whatever little bit of talent that he has that an editor was able to direct into, you know, a decent story like, you know, Midnighter or Midnighter and Apollo, that's all fucking gone. So you are about to get an absolute train wreck. So if you just like seeing train wrecks, you might as well just wait until Wes makes me read this for, you know, it's gonna for happen. worst of the week. Yeah, I know. It's absolutely going to happen. So, Doc, we know that Steve Orlando has a self-insert character in the X-Men universe. His name is Somnus, and he can put people under. What's the over-under on the amount of issues before Somnus puts Bobby Drake down and rapes the shit out of him for a thousand years? Uh, I'd say issue two, because in issue one, he's going to have to break up with Dokken so that he can now become Iceman's boyfriend, because that's the way it works for Steve Orlando books. Issue one, Dawkins and Somnus will be in the background and they'll break up. Issue two, Somnus will end up hooking up with Iceman. Um, it's not really hooking up if you actually put someone to sleep and then sexually abuse them while they're under. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's call it what it to, is, Doc. He's going to drape, or <laughs> can we call it a drape? Dream he's rape. Gonna him. <laughs> he's gonna drake him. <laughs> he's gonna drape. He's gonna drape the Drake. Steve Orlando is a bad writer. His time at Marvel has been terrible, but somehow he's not the worst writer associated with these announcements for Fall of X. We're getting Dark X Men, written by Steve Fox, which sees Madeline Pryor take charge of her own twisted team. Following the events of Hellfire Gala, Madeline Pryor realizes the world needs the X Men now more than ever. Havoc, Archangel, and Gambit have served on teams before, but never one that looks like this. And how does Gimmick, the breakout star of Children of the Atom, and 2023's Marvel Voices Pride fall under the Goblin Queen's sway? Find out the most terrific installment of the X-Men saga yet. I believe that's a true statement, that 
Dark X-Men has a great chance to be the most horrific installment of X-Men in the Krakoan era because Steve Fox shouldn't even be on like the free Marvel comics that they put on digital. They shouldn't be publishing him. He's that bad of a writer. I'm sorry. The idea that there was any breakout stars of Children of the Atom or 2023's Marvel Voices Pride, <laughs> the idea that any any single character in that is a breakout is just pure. Honestly, it's it's literary malpractice. This is I this read is all Children of the Atom, Doc. I don't remember which one was gimmick. Which one was I, that? Not a goddamn clue. I think it was the one that made all the costumes. So the the lesbian black girl with the 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 that faked being gambit in the beginning um maybe yeah because i think word for it I, I think so it wasn't it wasn't girl cyclops this is straight up just marketing malpractice at this point it will be horrific for all of the the worst possible reasons the only thing that's even more horrific is the fact that there aren't going to be enough weeks in august when this comes out so that you can subject me to all of these books i'm betting at least you two think of them i can't you think you, i won't you think there's going to be at least one week where two of these books come out and you're going to have to choose we'll have to which do, of we'll these. do a double feature i used to uh, go to the drive-in ah uh, fuck you uh, i'm old school I'm not completely opposed to the idea of a dark X-Men or a, a darker X-Men team. Obviously, we get that with X-Force, but you actually have to have a good writer associated with it. That thing is DOA. The last creator that we do have, I don't think is nearly as bad as Steve Fox or Steve Orlando, but I think if Marvel Comics were like in a boom period, no one would even know who this is because they wouldn't hire them. Realm of X, written by Torn Grunbeck, focuses on a small band of mutant kind's fiercest warriors, as they are sent to a mystical mission across the Ten Realms, leaping straight from the astonishing events of this year's Hellfire Gala, an unlikely group of mutants find themselves stranded in Vanaheim, and what's even more confusing, the locals seem to believe that they are holding the key to fulfilling a prophecy that can either raise the realm to riches or cause it to fall to ruin. With magic's powers malfunctioning and a mysterious figure amassing power on the outskirts of the realm, these X-Men are going to have to band together if they want to stay alive long enough to them to find a way home. So they found a female uh, Norse writer to do a Thor book, but it called X-Men. Welcome to the party, dollar store Tinny Howard. Um, I guess Tinny's even too expensive at this point because this is absolutely just going to be keeping up. The only thing that it's missing is Betsy Braddock, but we just have probably haven't gotten the, the announcement of her. It does being seem part like the third cast. like story arc for knights of x or whatever that's oh it's it, it, it's absolutely the stealth third story arc even if it doesn't include um betsy this time who is this a draw for you're making a thor book here that doesn't have thor but does have a bunch of mutants whose connection to the the the, the asgardian realms is tenuous at best. The only way they can make this story even make sense is if Ileana's powers are on the fritz because her power is the fucking teleport across realms and dimensions. You don't have to worry about whatever's going on there. All you got to do is just fix Magic's powers and then go home. Or you could have Jane Foster Valkyrie show up and save the day since it is a Thor book. Yeah, that'll probably be it. And then Danny Moonstar, who has a much longer history as a valkyrie will then obviously have to uh verbally fillet jane foster valkyrie is how that she's standing up in the, the 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 best valkyrie of all valkyries in the history of valkyries or some other nonsensical bullshit um no this this book is another one destined to fail congratulations y you have a book that's not a mutant book I guess it's just as ridiculous as having a Spider-Man book and an Iron Man book in the whole Fall of X thing, but it's just an excuse for... Don't forget the Avengers book, Doc. Yeah, yeah, and there's also an Avengers book, so everything but X-Men. They are so out of ideas for how to fix the X-Men that the only way to carry the X-Line is with not X-Men characters. I mean, fuck, that uh, Dark X-Men book, has a robot. Many a tree will be fell so they can print these comic books that no one is actually going to buy from the comic book shops. Somebody will order them, but no one will actually buy them. And I didn't think it was possible, but I am certainly less excited now 
for Fall of X than I was before I got this information. What um, an absolute slap in the face to anybody that ever held out any hope that Kokoa could somehow be saved with better writing to actually import more and even worse bad writers and put them up on as marquee names, I guess. Look, if I was marketing this, I would have done it the same way they did because you have to hide how embarrassing and underwhelming these launches are by sticking it in a language that doesn't exist on your marketing material. As I mentioned earlier, I did discuss my reactions to the initial information that we did have about Fall of X. Obviously, we did have all the creative teams that we do here, but I was less than whelmed. I was not whelmed. I must have been underwhelmed. I talked about it all right here. If you haven't seen this video and you're interested in my thoughts on Fall of X and why I think this is going to be an absolute train wreck, watch this video right now. There's also a link in the video description.